Thanks for tuning in. Please like, subscribe, and check out my Instagram for cool science and not science stuff. And a big thank you to my patrons on Patreon for your contributions to my channel. Welcome back to Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to be discussing thermotherapy. This is really just a fancy term for using heat as a therapeutic modality. Before we discuss the specific types of thermotherapy, let's go over the overall effects of using heat as a therapeutic modality, and then also discuss the contraindications and precautions to this type of treatment. So first of all, here's a table discussing the overall effects of thermotherapy and also cryotherapy, which is using cold as a therapeutic modality. So most of the effects between these two are the opposite of one another, except for a couple here which are the same, and we'll need to watch out for those. So all of these effects are just going to be in the area where the heat is applied. So if we apply the heat to the low back, we're not going to get these effects in the legs of the arm. So these are all local. So obviously applying heat is going to give us an increase in local temperature. And that local temperature increase also is going to lead to vasodilation in that area. So the blood vessels in that area are going to dilate. Now naturally that's going to be a response to dissipate heat. If you get hot, your blood vessels vasodilate to dissipate that heat. However, this vasodilation is also going to lead to increased blood flow to that area, which is actually part of the reason why we'd want to use heat. Now in terms of collagen compliance, for heat, it's going to cause collagen to become more compliant. So collagen, remember, is that protein that gives tissues tensile strength. Well, if we want to loosen tissues up, we use heat, which increases the compliance or extensibility of that collagen, and it makes them looser, okay, so loosening tissues. This can be important if our goal is to, let's say, increase range of motion around a particular joint. So if muscles and the associated uh, connective tissue are really tight, then maybe applying heat could actually increase that collagen compliance loosen those tissues and maybe we can get some extra range of motion at a particular joint. And actually increasing range of motion is one of the major considerations for using heat. Also in this area we get a local increase in metabolic rate, so increase in VO2. Uh, this has to do with greater oxygen consumption by those tissues. Also that vasodilation and getting extra blood flow to that area also helps to increase the rate of oxygen consumption and metabolic rate. We also get a decrease in blood viscosity. So blood has a certain viscosity at its normal temperature, but if we heat the blood up, then it's going to become less viscous. This actually increases the rate at which it flows through the vasculature in that area. Now, if we use thermotherapy, we also get a decrease in muscle tone. So muscle tone is actually going to drop in the heat. This is actually the same thing that we see in cryotherapy. Um, after a while, the muscle tone is actually going to decrease in cryotherapy as well. So these are the same. Now, we also see an increase in muscle fatigue with thermotherapy if it's prolonged. This has to do with the increase in metabolic rate. So if the muscle's metabolism increases, it's going to go through ATP more quickly, and therefore it's going to fatigue more quickly. Notice this is a prolonged effect. So you won't see this in the first couple of minutes. It takes a while uh, of heat on a muscle for it to actually fatigue. And that's really going to be if it's exercising. If you're just sitting there, you're not going to have to really worry about fatigue. It's actually when you're moving it around in conjunction with the heat that it's going to fatigue more quickly. Also, thermotherapy reduces pain in the muscle. Notice that this is something common between both cryotherapy and thermotherapy. They both actually result in reduced pain. So when you're differentiating whether or not to use thermotherapy or cryotherapy, pain is really not a differentiating factor. Okay? Pain will be reduced in both of these types of modalities. However, cryotherapy is going to be better for reducing inflammation. Okay? Thermotherapy is better, as we talked about, for loosening up tissues if our goal is maybe to increase range of motion. Also notice that blood and lymph flow increases with thermotherapy. This has to do with a couple of things. One is just generally increased kinetic energy when we heat things up, but also that decreased viscosity and that increased flow rate that also changes the flow of blood and lymph through the vasculature in that area. And then also capillary permeability and blood cell motility also increase. So this capillary permeability, this actually has to do a little bit with inflammation. Okay? So if we have pre-existing inflammation, especially if it's excessive, 
we may not want to use thermal therapy because, remember, inflammation, you already have greater capillary permeability. That's one of the jobs of histamine with inflammation. So if we use thermal therapy, we're going to increase that capillary permeability even more and may maintain or exacerbate uh, pre-existing inflammation. So if there's inflammation, we may want to switch to cryotherapy because it will still decrease pain, but it will decrease that capillary permeability and help to reduce inflammation. So those are some considerations when we are choosing between thermal therapy and cryotherapy. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.